The hosts of Two Board Apes are not registered investment advisors. The podcast is for entertainment and informational purposes only. Nothing said on it should be construed as investment advice. Two Board Apes talking NFTs, DeFi, and some random stuff. <laughs> Two Board Apes talking NFTs, DeFi, and some random stuff. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Hello. Well, welcome to episode 29. Thank you. Of, of what? Is, the two board apes. Uh-huh. This is interesting. I got one of them right here. Yep. Right. I have some in my closet. I thought it might be a little corny if we were both doing it. I got a Daredevil hoodie on. Mm-hmm. I'll allow a little, it. It's a little bit of my own artwork underneath, but that's okay. We don't, we don't need to get into that. Um, yeah. This is very strange. I've never done this um, with a webcam before. It is it's strange. I got my coffee. I'm just going to put some pepper in it. I've got my tea. That's ridiculous. I'm going to put honey in it because I'm normal. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty good. Stop saying that. I need, I need you to stop Except acting like it, it's good. You, you got to mix it in because I just got a whole sip of pepper. It can't, it can't actually be better than coffee without pepper, though. It's it's Well, it depends on the quality of the coffee. So... If I'm making like, you know, proper coffee, grinding the beans, doing like a pour over or something. If you're trying yeah, to mask no a bad tasting cup of coffee, putting some pepper in it. Right. Yeah. If it's instant coffee, it then pepper is, is a good solution. So I sometimes I'm gonna, instant. I'm tempted yeah. to contradict myself right now, but I could conceive of the concept where if you added the black pepper straight into the grinds and then brewed through it, like maybe. It would actually there we go. Happen. That's what I'm going to try next. Um, let's talk about three, the news three. of the week. News of the week. News, news of, of the, the week. week. <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna pick my tea bag up and down a little bit okay. right now and then well, throw it out. So you you start. We've got we've got a few things. <laughs> the first, I guess, one of the we, it's been a bunch of big news, but one of the big things is the the hack that happened on the Solana Ethereum bridge. Yeah, that was huge. Is that the biggest DeFi hack ever? I don't. I, I guess I don't really. I, know. I don't know either. It's got to be up there for sure. Maybe it's got to be up there. It's true on, um, yeah, I'm going to say no. I want to. I, I feel like, like Mount Gox was just dollar. like a, a sort of a rug rather than a hack, I guess. I think so, yeah. Uh, uh, there was like an almost funny. hack in December. Someone uh, found an exploit in the Polygon network and they basically effectively could have literally drained every single Matic token, however many they wanted. And that's, you know, several billion dollars, but they, they, got the bug bounty instead they were a white hat uh but yeah this solana bridge hack uh Are someone you familiar just with that concept right white hat versus black hat versus gray hat right yeah i don't necessarily know what a gray hat is but a white hat it, is it's um, w- exactly what you think it is based on what white <laughs> and black is yeah i mean so white hack is as a hacker who finds exploits in white in hat white hat yeah h-a-t yeah yeah um who finds exploits in in whatever DeFi protocols or, or smart contracts and These instead of long like before all the blockchain stuff, right yeah but yeah yeah uh instead smart of like contracts. exploiting and taking advantage and getting a whole bunch of money or, or you know uh information data etc they tell the the people involved and, and get a reward black hats the same thing except they exploit it and i guess gray hats are the ones who like say hey we we found this exploit give us money or something like that? No, I think that would be generally more like a, a black hat hacker. I think it's just one where they kind of follow their own moral compass. Like, for instance, uh, what I would consider one maybe would be somebody like what Hype did with the Mebits thing, where he just got the alien one. Mm. Um, it's it's not really like he's not stealing money right. from people. He's sort of exploiting a mistake to, to get something that one of us is going to get anyway. Um, mm. I, I don't know. It's so, yeah. it's just it's somewhere in between basically, um, yeah. and and one person's gray hat is you know to another person that's white, right, to right. Person, it's black, but that's why it's gray. Um, yeah. Um. So that was big. That was like eighty thousand ether. I'm pretty sure. Or I think I saw something as like up to one hundred twenty thousand ether. Right. So much, so much it money. Is crazy. Yeah. I don't know too much more about it aside from that. I actually read some pretty good tweet threads about how it worked. Um that were quite interesting. So basically, as I understand it right now, they didn't um, steal 
uh, F that was on the Polygon network, they basically um, came up with a fake the signature. Network. Yes, well, what did I yeah. say? Polygon. Oh, uh, yeah, Solana. They basically faked the signature um, that would allow them to mint more of the, you know, wrapped Ether on mm. Polygon. So they basically tricked it into creating out of thin air all of this F, which they were then able to take across the bridge back over to real Ethereum or something, wow. something to that effect. Yeah, pretty wild stuff. And yeah. just goes to show you how new and risky all of this is. Like, Right. And it was, it yeah. was, I mean, as most of this stuff is, it was basically just, there was like a little bit of laziness in the, in the code for the bridge, which I could remember a little bit better, but basically, um, the way that they would verify whether or not it was a legitimate signature or not was using like basically just an out of date patch to, or, or something to that yeah. effect, um, that just allowed them to bypass it. But I, I I'm always so impressed by people that can do this stuff and, and just the thoroughness of their understanding yeah. of all of this. It's fucking amazing to me. It's so far beyond our level of understanding. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we started off talking about DeFi. That's something new, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's very <laughs> We rare. normally start with the random stuff and then get to NFTs and then there's no DeFi. But we've and got just to DeFi. completely ignore DeFi. But here we are. Yeah. Um, next thing on the list. I mean, are we done with that? That seemed like... Yeah. Yeah. There was a there was a big hack uh, hack, and it, I, we'll just talk about it for another second. I think it was like two hundred and sixty million dollars, mm. and the bridge themselves offered them ten million retrospectively yeah. to like give it back. Doesn't seem like that's going to work. And then also the bridge said somehow they're going to make everything whole by just like adding another three hundred fifty thousand f to them. I don't know where that's yeah, coming it from. Doesn't but... seem reason. <laughs> I don't know how that works either. I don't, I don't either, but I guess we'll have to wait yeah. and see. I, I, it's also interesting to conceive of, and I'm, I don't pay enough attention to DeFi and Solana at all to know the answer, but like what was happening with all of the pools and farms and all of that stuff over there? Because at that point, they had all of this uh, wrapped Ether over there mm. that was essentially worthless because the actual Ether that was supposed to be backing it in this is just gone now. Right. Um, so I... I would assume some people got wrecked and some people got rich by taking advantage of that. But yeah, but maybe everybody kind of just pretended like it was still back and it didn't <laughs> change things too much. Yeah. My Luke, I really my don't Luke know. Steiner mug. Oh yeah. It's a Gilmore girls reference. I like it. It kind of looks, um, no, never mind. Um, okay. All right. Next on the list, we have lava. You wrote this list. Lava labs are douches. Yeah. That's what I wrote, but it's just um, to talk about the V1 versus V2 thing. Now, when was the first time you even heard about V1 punks? Because I didn't even realize that such a thing existed until, I don't know, two weeks ago or whatever, when they started kind of... Oh, yeah, that, that was about when I heard about them too, fairly recently. And stuff, or yeah. talking about dumping them and then dumping them. I think, I think I'd like vaguely heard about them many months ago because I know that like the punks were not in the ERC721 contract and they had to wrap them right, to get and that's them why they yeah um but yeah. erc721 didn't exist when punks came out no. I mean, but so should we tell people what we're even talking about because we're being <laughs> sure vague. yeah i just so, got my pen so i'm gonna pick it up while you talk i'll talk about it. all right so the crypto punks that we all know and love or hate or are somewhere in between but the crypto punks that we know of are actually version two of crypto punks because when larva labs made them the first time they deployed the contract to the network to, to make crypto punks, there was some sort of error in the contract. Um, and so they basically just made a version two that fixed that exploit and then airdropped the V2 punks that we, we just think mm. of as punks to all of the V1 holders. And that was basically the end of it. Um, but you know now sort of this blockchain archeology span thing has become sort of popular and people kind of dug up the concept of the V1s, mm -hmm. threw them in one of these new wrappers, and then people kind of started using them, trading them, buying them, selling them, whatever. And Larva Labs themselves still owned a bunch of them. Yeah. And, and that's where them. it started. Yes, that's where it started getting a little bit dicey because what yeah. ended up happening is they sold these um, to the tune of 210 Ether, maybe it was. Something like that, right? yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but now we're going to try and take legal action to prevent them from being called uh, crypto punks, from being allowed to be traded on OpenSea, all of that good stuff. Yeah. Um, but then also patted themselves on the back for donating that 210 Ether to charity while also admitting that they definitely should not have done what they did. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that they said they're going to sell the V1s and, and then use any money raised to buy V2s in the marketplace. And then so they, they bought recently, one punk that's already. That's what they've said, right? No, that was the initial thing. And then they also oh. added recently that they're still planning to do that and they're just going to donate an additional 210 ETH to charity. That was from what they had already sold, is my understanding. The 210 is, is the proceeds 210 is what they've, they've sold. already dumped. Yeah, and that's what they're right. donating. No, that's what they're using and have been using to buy the crypto punks, and they're just out of their own pocket adding an additional oh, okay. 10. Okay. Yeah. And have they spent the 210 on punks yet? The V2 punks? They bought one punk at 80 or 90 ETH. And right. I remember seeing somebody tweeted that they had bought one, and it, but it was more just like, a, oh, what do they have in mind? It was like maybe yeah. an IP kind of um, presumption, is what I read into the person's tweet that had seen that purchase by yeah. them. Yeah. Um, it just seems like another misstep mistake just error on the behalf of lava labs in a string of many many and it's just sort of like community sentiment seems to be shifting against crypto punks and lava labs and yeah, we're they're like, losing like good collectors i mean we talked about 4156 leaving um, 10 episodes back or something like that yeah. but I, I saw another one that people really respect going i'm trying i'm i'm out basically yeah it, it's they're losing a lot of their core support and I then not like one left. Von Mises seems to be a very staunch <laughs> defender, but yeah. yeah, we don't need to get into there, that. There's, a, there's um, a couple more for sure, but it just it it feels more and more like it's just purely people with bags of it that are. And by the way, this is funny now. You just got finally bought your first one, <laughs> a week yeah, and a half ago or something, and now something like that. I finally, I was like, I'm gonna pull the trigger. I've won on for ages. I held off all the while. You know, punks were dropping, apes were going up in price, and yeah. You know, and then I, you know, you go back six months ago, and I, I always thought if ever a time comes when apes flip punks, I'm going to sell one of my three apes and, and buy a punk. Just it just never felt right. Never and then, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, it just sort of seemed like punks was picking up momentum again, and I was like, all right, you know, I've got a lot more ETH now. I can justify buying one. I think it's good long term investment. There were these rumors floating around that Lava Labs were going to like relinquish their copyright hold over the punks and give yeah. the rights back and it seems um, less and less like that's true or if it if it does happen it will not be something that they do um you know out of the kindness of their hearts it'll be because like yeah. the market is just fucking demanding it yeah i think um yeah they, they really are losing support um yeah that's that's the v2 of it and the v1 punks uh they hit a floor of like 16 eth last i checked 16 yeah. Oh wow! I, I I actually had no frame of reference whatsoever for how high they got, but that's higher than I would have assumed. Yeah, there was six and ETH I, like a week ago, and then I checked like a couple days after that, and they were up at sixteen. I wonder what they were like twenty weeks ago, like just zero basically, or do you? Have I think any that idea? they didn't even exist twenty weeks ago. I think it's a relatively new it just thing. Just had to be someone, wrapped before it even was it, a thing. They had really. to fix a, a patch of bug and then wrap them, and then yeah. So it's a relatively new thing. I'm trying to put more honey into my tea, but it's, it's not really coming out. <laughs> um, you know what I was just laughing at? This is talking about random off stuff. Off topic again? Yeah. yeah. The background of me versus the background of you. You have I, there's yeah, just it's like... nothing going on. <laughs> and mine is just, yeah. this is a house. I've been, yeah, toying. Let me see if I can put a, how does this look? Loading, loading, loading. You're going to put your Ecky on. should have done this before we started recording. Oh, there you go. That's kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, that actually looks... Yeah. Doesn't look so bad. I'm going to... You got a sea ham in there. The yeah, we got a sea ham. We got my ape there. We've got a yeah. smile. Pudgy penguin. Pudgy penguin. Doodles. A duck. Cool cat. Cool cat. Got a cat. What's that next? Oh, I was going to say that's a gutter cat. A gutter cat. Um... And then this owl, who's sort of come, becoming the more the mascot of Zen Academy or something. Um, I can't. I can't wait for the end of this show where I get to talk about Zen Academy because I'm really excited about a lot of things that are happening there. But 
news of the week. This is news of the week. I know. Um, that's it for Lava Labs, I think. Yeah. The next thing we have is like the meta, just of all these anime projects sort of popping off. And what does the word meta mean to to people that don't understand that concept? Yeah, meta is sort of, so it comes from the meta game. It's sort of like a concept from video games where, say, there'll be a competitive video game and certain characters or strategies will become very popular because they're strong and powerful and like players will figure that out and sort of like because this strong and powerful strategy has been discovered, more people will be using that and sort of like that strategy is in meta. But then people will like figure out, okay, so if a lot of people the are using that strategy. The meta will evolve to figure out what's the yeah. counter to that. What and, do we um, do to... Yeah. yeah. So we, we had it, talked about Kobe's sub stack that he wrote where he basically was um, comparing the entirety of the crypto market to this sort of meta that we ha- have in sort of these competitive games and talking about just what what is in the meta of of the crypto market what's really yeah. hot and what's going to be really hot in the future or whatever and so within the context of the nft market it seems like these sort of anime style profile pictures are very popular right now azuki very being much. the main one and the first one yeah azuki and then we've seen lives of uh, asuna and uh what's the other one zip zipsies I, I can never remember exactly how to pronounce it let me look it up right now um but yeah they've been popping up uh zipsies super normal yeah just it, it's sort of like interesting timing because it's like we i mean we spoke several episodes ago about how it seemed like the asian market was entering nfts more and obviously there's a huge market for like anime manga from japan and, and just asian markets and it's sort of like this and obviously like a lot of people in Western, Western culture like I mean, those things. Yeah, yeah anime has been huge here for a long time. So it's sort of been uh, just finding projects that just appeal to both markets and sensibilities. And it seems like these Azuki style projects have really captured the zeitgeist. I do find it so interesting how th- there just seems to be in like in the month of January, a bunch of really high quality anime projects that are popping off. And it's like, obviously we've seen like dozens of copycats, but yeah. it, is it a case that there were always a bunch and now these are the ones that are super popular because of that or just some crazy coincidence that azuki uh I mean, of Asuna you could look on the blockchain and see who see when I all could, these projects yeah. existed initially i guess one example really uh of one that was around for a while but didn't pop off until this month is capsule house which i'm still kicking myself for not getting because yeah we don't need to get it that, wasn't but. just sitting doing nothing though you know right is this a uh, Serialites project you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. It minted it was like 0.08 or something. And then it rocketed. It was at a 0.2 for a while, then up to like 0.7. But then in that like September, October, November, December bear market, or like November, December, it dropped down at 0.1 or so. For, and so it was doing nothing for quite a while, I'm pretty sure. And then now we're yeah, at like 40, I mean, I get, I, I guess, you know, because I still have a bunch of divine zodiacs that are at 0.01 or less, <laughs> I still think of 0.1 as like, that's not nothing, you know? Right, um, yeah, but but it compared to how much other where we are, projects yeah. and stuff were popping off, that, that and, is and it's freaking seal light, like, right? This is an artist whose work on super rare sells for like 100 plus ETH in some instances. I'm pretty I sure I just made 50 my plus. super rare account yesterday, um, and bit on my exciting. first thing that was kind of yeah, fun, yeah. And if I was better at screen sharing, maybe I would show you, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want to bring more competition to try and buy the same piece that I'm going after, so maybe I should <laughs> yeah, use myself. That's fair. Um, I'm excited to jump into the uplock section later because I want to screen share while I'm buying. Yeah, you're excited a piece to talk about Zen Academy. You're excited to talk about <laughs> art blocks, but what about what we're actually talking about? All right, anime projects. Uh, I, I think we, we yeah. mostly covered it. Just though, Azuki is yeah. huge. The art is huge. great. It's um, so good. I it, it's another one of those projects where it was like six F before I even fucking was aware of it. So I haven't yeah. actually paid much attention to it other than like to see who on my Twitter timeline has them and is excited Mm. about them um, and just kind of to browse the art a little bit myself just to kind of see. And I I do think it's attractive art. Mm -hmm. Um, But beyond that, I don't know anything about like the roadmap, the team. I actually, I do. The team is like LA based, but beyond Mm -hmm. that, I guess I don't really know, but, but there's a, a, the artist is from Overwatch. Yeah. It's, it's a legit team. There's not like a ton 
I, I spoke about this with Carly on the overpriced JPEGs podcast because she was looking into it as well and she like looked into the team and it's not easy to find out like I don't know how fully docs they are and all that kind of stuff. Like they, they, they talk about their experience, ex Google, um, and stuff like that. But aside from the artist who is uh, who worked on Overwatch for a lot of the assets and stuff there, um, yeah, it, it I know or believe that it has a really strong team because I've chatted with them and spoken to them. But it's not like easily apparent for someone wanting to look into the project and checking the website just how how strong it is. But yeah, it, it's just captured plenty of neurons as uh yeah. one of our mutual friends would say and um yeah Neuron it's really capture. it's really killing it uh it's, it's literally been top of like the open sea volume and looks rare well not looks rare looks rare at all <laughs> watch watch trading me bits and terraforms but um yeah top of the open sea volume for like 10 days or something yeah it, it i can't remember any of sort of the exact specific stats that i'm trying to mention but like the fact that it, it rocketed to top 10 all-time volume of any project mm. and passed like clone X, maybe even very quickly and uh, very impressive numbers. Certainly. What it, now, what is yeah. the size of the collection? Is it exactly 10,000 or I think so. You know yeah. I can uh, look it up again. I think it's, I think it's 10 K exactly. Now um, I'm sort of curious, just in a general sense, we've talked about this kind of thing before, but like 10 K the way that these profile picture communities are able to coalesce around each other um, makes the markets for them so fertile and able to rocket so much in a way that it just doesn't really make sense for um, like the land that isn't being used right now, the gaming assets that aren't being used right now, mm. and just flat out art to ever be able to appreciate to that extent. And, and it seems to me the art ought to just stay like that forever, but maybe I could see where once we're really in these VR lands more um, and we're actually playing these games more, they'll be able mm. to have that same community uh, like excitement that, that makes the markets for them just a as crazy and quick as we've been able to really mm. see some of these profile picture communities just go like zero to fifty thousand dollar floors in no time yeah yeah i i think that sort of when we are in like the metaverse is more yeah it'll just be more real it'll like spread like wildfire really like you you're walking around in sandbox um at like a party or something and some asset drops and you just see it in the sky i don't know how it works some, someone a bunch of people there are wearing it and it's like a limited edition drop and people are scrambling yeah. to get in on it and you know, it's interesting, though, because, like these identities, theoretically, right, are so persistent and interoperable that, you know, even when that kind of thing happens, that will still be something that's shining a light on the strength of these actual identity mm. type projects. You know what I mean? Because, you know, yeah. you're talking about when we're in Sandbox, but theoretically, for the most part, these people that are in Sandbox will be in it as their Mibit, as their Ape, as their Azuki. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, like... It it that it just seems like it's it's something that's never been done before, and the strength that we're seeing out of them, you know, I I, I don't think across the board all the projects will be able to to stay where they are, um, or the pace of new ones that succeed will be able to to continue at the rate that it has. But boy, it's it's just it's really a very fascinating new thing that um, has has a lot of intrinsic value to people and and i think more people are just going to have to 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 find it an attractive concept and and like you know i just talked about how i went on to super rare but when i went from um not having a super rare account to a super rare account and then i this it sounds kind of simple but i changed my profile picture on there to my ape and i changed my i set my name to jamie musings and it's like i literally brought this digital identity there in a way that if I had called myself Jamie Kaplan and put a picture of myself or whatever, or like another picture of Batman, which I'm also into or something like that yeah. you know, from before the NFT profile picture days, it just, that, that persistence of identity within these digital spaces. Um, it, it's just an interesting, powerful thing to me that um, I, I feel like there's so few of us that really understand it right now. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm curious to know, how many 
people who have these PFP avatars, including us, are going to want to be that identity in the metaverse. Like, I haven't really spent much time visualizing and conceptualizing what it's actually going to feel like to walk around as like a board ape and my board mm-hmm. ape. And if I might prefer to be like something like an, an Azuki, which is more, you know, I don't know, more, more, more human, more, yeah. It is more human. Yeah. yeah. They're humans. Or I guess some yeah. of them aren't, right? Like they're spirit ones and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, true. But human um, form. They're all human. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think. All right. Um, oh, do you want to cut me off? No, no. Go no on. Okay. I think it'll just be um, sort of what is established for you. And for you, perhaps, because you are sort of doing so much with Zen Academy and are doing like lots of spaces and stuff like that. Um your identity is less linked to your ape than than some other people's identity is to mm. their chosen profile picture. But I would assume that um, a large percentage of people that are around now, whatever their profile pic NFT is now, it's it, it will be a persistent identity. Um, yeah. I, I for me, where I'm at right now, I I can't imagine that I would actually be existing in sort of these virtual spaces with the option to be my ape and not actually walking mm. around as my ape. That it it seems weird. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I feel like my identity is now bizarrely more identif like uh merging to like the color purple. Because like the background uh, of my ape is you created it with the purple ecumenopolis. Yeah. And it, it's like very distinct now and like it stands out right. from all the other ape PFEs. So I uh, obviously adopted that with Zen Academy Prince, branding. Maybe. Yeah, I do. I, I will always remember the episode of the Long Shot podcast, which you love. I um, sure and do. I, I, I'm a fan of as well. Um, shortly after Prince died, one of the 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 hosts or the uh, speakers, Amber, was talking about how <laughs> it's like lit- What's that? Just referring to what them as the speakers is ridiculous. <laughs> well, she wasn't really, she's not the host, but she's not a guest. So she's like co-host. She's one of the co-hosts, I, th- I think is fair enough. Well, but she is speaker now. Is just so anyway, funny. anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, she was talking about how Prince basically owned the color purple. Like, yeah. He made that his brand and like, and, I'm, and com- now I'm coming for you. Now Prince. he's dead and you're stealing it. <laughs> Rest in peace, though. He, he was a giant. Oh um, god, I, I'm having a major issue here. Oh I'm boy, stuck. Oh, <laughs> James stuck. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna open the window because I'm really freaking hot. Okay. There's an area rug <sighs> right behind me. You can kind of. Oh, I can see it. Yeah. See it. See it there. Yeah, I can it, see the corner of it. Yeah. It basically starts like one centimeter behind my wheel. So I can't actually get enough momentum to like get up it. And then I just push the thing and I get stuck anyway. Yeah. Um, this is some more of that random stuff that people love. Do you, should we, um, we're done with the news of the week. It seems like, right. I think so. Yeah. We're just rambling now about the color purple. <laughs> <laughs> news, of All right, uh, news of the week. All right. News of the week. Board Ape Yacht Club. Board Ape Yacht Club. I'm actually, I'm doing like the director's, uh, what is it called? Oh, right. The... But not actually making the noise for the. Anyway. Yeah, I'm making the noise to the audio. Which I think is the important part. It is the important part. <laughs> no, no one's watching for this in like a... Right. Something, yeah. Um, anyway. Wow, well, we have a lot like. of things listed here. It's been a busy week or so. Ten days. Yeah. Um. Let's let's just start. The mobile, mobile game, game con- is over. Yep. Or the contest. I guess the game still exists and you can play it if you want. But the con- seven-day contest... Which actually got changed um, to, I believe, a six-day contest because it was so unhealthy for people's sleep patterns and stuff. It was just people was like, grinding nonstop. Yeah, yeah. They, they basically said, hey, like we're going to do a community vote and see if we should just make this one or two days less. And it yeah. was overwhelmingly voted, yes, please, God, let us get some sleep. <laughs> um, and so they yeah. did. Yeah, seems like it play, was a fun game. I played for like two hours grinding. and I yeah. and it was no way I was going to get any of the prizes I wanted to without – using way too much of my time um, yeah. so i just had a little bit of fun playing it and then kind of watched in amazement at the at the high scores that other people were putting mm. up and thinking about the amount of hours that they must have been playing and now they're doing like a you know a two-week audit or wherever to to try and catch all the cheaters that mm, presumably interesting 
did I don't even really know what they would have done. Um, I guess multi accounting type stuff where somebody a thousand yeah. miles away is playing right after right. You. It's like okay, obviously, yeah, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, I I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I knew I did really well, want but... some of those prizes too, but yeah, it was just it was up to go on eBay one day. Yeah, yeah. maybe. I bet you some of them are going to be so expensive. I know, I know. The floor price apes went to 120 oh my ETH. God, I think. 120 just, ETH. Yeah, and not just apes though. Apes, mutants, and dogs all went crazy over the last two and a half weeks. Is that about a fair time to say? Yeah, when it started pretty much up? since the first of January, it just went. So it's it crazy seemed like it... I was going to say it was sort of seemed like. At the beginning of January, we were seeing like a, a relatively big pump from what I often refer to as sort of these tier two and tier three type mm. uh, profile picture projects. And apes were just kind of steady, which is good enough, maybe. Um, although I guess the S price was also kind of dropping a lot at this at this point. Mm. Um, but then recently, maybe again around January 15th ish, I don't know, it seemed like they really started to catch a lot of momentum and went from where were they 75 to 120 is, is basically yeah is and not that bit. long yeah and then um maybe the dogs went from like four to 13 ish and yeah. then mutants went from like eight to 28 is that were they down yeah that's so crazy yeah 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 it's so oh, crazy. and by the way <laughs> it's funny i was listening to our previous episode and I don't know if you remember this. You were impersonating me, and I was impersonating you. <laughs> paper handing you, yeah. NFTs. Just, you were making fun of me for paper handing my blue chip NFTs, but I did that with my mutant. <laughs> the, the, the speed with which all of the ape stuff yeah. was going up, and the percentage of my entire net worth that was tied up in these four NFTs just seemed too crazy. Um, yeah, and I just I still didn't want to sell the ape because that uh, it's just no way I'm getting it back, and it's like too awesome. Mm. Um, and then the dogs, the prices relative to the mutants and also the supply. I mean, I've talked about this a lot, but mm. there's 20,000 mutants and less than 10,000 dogs. So that's just huge. Um, yeah. And I did think about it a lot. Do I want to sell one dog? Do I want to sell two dogs? Do I want to sell the mutant? Do I want to sell the mutant plus the dog? You okay over there? I'm closing the window because uh, window Rachel's cold. Okay. Um. And so I was just kind of trying to decide. I, I definitely want to sell some of this to lock in some of these ridiculous profits, um, as I just don't think that these prices can keep increasing at this rate for this long. Mm. Um, and I ended up determining that the best idea for me was to sell the mute, and, and I did at twenty four. Are you planning to buy back in if it drops to say ten, twelve? Not right now, um, but. I could conceive of such a thing happening at some point in the future, but I just um, am happy right now to have an ape and two dogs for sure. Yeah. Um, because uh, it just, Justin... like, nope, sorry, I was, got... I was just going to say the idea of buying back in at 10, while it may be a good um, move, um, you know, just as an average market participant, mm. I'm still in a situation where my ape is worth so friggin' much money yeah, yeah, yeah. relative to everything else. And there's so many other to, good options. To invest more money into this ecosystem is just, it's from a portfolio perspective, doesn't make any sense for me. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And prices have come down a bit since, yeah, since that 27, 28, um, and sort of leveled off. So I, I, like I said, I had sold at 24. I think it came down to like 19 and a half, maybe. Um, pretty mm. quickly after and i think now it's at like 21 23 actually i just checked oh really oh yeah it's, it's, it's a little bit higher yeah. yeah it bounced a bit but um yeah i um, mean i think apes I, are right at like 100 basically 100 yeah it, it was like yeah they had gone up so much some pullback at some point so fast. that was not insignificant was inevitable it's also um, weird too like the concept and we haven't really seen it for the most part maybe autoglyphs is like at twin flames the only i'm trying to think of examples of projects that have had a hundred plus floor and stayed there is like there's basically never been any for the most part and so pretty much it's, yeah it's very especially much not this West. 10k collection type deal yeah uh yeah how many autoglyphs are there like 400 or something like that maybe i think it's 512 would 
makes sense. Either way, mind. you know, much yeah. much smaller supply than ten thousand. And twin yeah. flames even uh, less is like a hundred of them, I think. Hundred, I think. Yeah. Um, looking, looking, looking. Autoglyphs, yeah, hundred and uh, five hundred and twelve. Floor price, two hundred ETH. Um. So, on our list, oh, the stations, art blocks just sold out. Oh well, we won't be minting that on stream. Um, uh-huh. Justin Bieber paid five hundred ETH for a floor eight. That was a crazy thing that happened. Did you see his Instagram post afterwards? I did see it. I also saw somebody on Twitter had said, um, if you read the comments, they were like overwhelmingly positive which really yeah is so counter to sort of the narrative we have within the nft space about how everybody outside of it hates Mm. it i mean i guess maybe bieber's fans like him so much that their like of him is greater than the sort of their work out as the kids would say his fans are woke that's not he's not right (laughs) Um, but that you know they're need some more pepper coffee their love of him far exceeds their theoretical hatred of nfts you don't you missed your control, mouth yeah. i think i like i was laughing and like i swished the the cup around and it just sort of went on me and, and on my desk and but he, <sighs> nothing like a little pepper coffee to fix it though yeah but he's <laughs> huge i mean we've talked about when like jimmy fallon got in he was the 23rd biggest account on so and so and um Excuse Justin me. Bieber what? is the second most followed account on Twitter. Yeah, Neymar was the other one I was trying to think of. Yeah. But yeah, he, like his level of celebrity is so astronomical. It's it, There's barely anywhere else to go, you know? Obama. So you were saying, when, when Obama. <laughs> um, you know, it also feels like sort of within the, the cultural space that has become fairly popular for apes um drake is like the only bigger or like definitely bigger name that could mm. possibly get in it feels like that would be me. that would be wild yeah yeah it also at some point like you know it, theoretically it's cool to get in right it is the concept but at some point when so many other celebrities to get in it there there is sort of a counterculture mm, um, exactly punk type narrative that makes it cool to not get one right yeah it'll be interesting to see how that evolves yeah um and yeah. there's also like some rumblings on like nft twitter about how the apes ecosystem or maybe just apes themselves i should say probably is it's shifted because it's it's not the original creators and mm. it's there's definitely not the underdog narrative it's just it's now it's all right. these celebrities coming in and all of that stuff which is i mean uh, honestly if we're talking about the celebrities that are in the club there's really like 70 of them out of the 2008 yeah. or something yeah yeah but but they do are get a lot of attention disproportionately right. um obviously and it used to be like zero and now it's 70 and it, maybe in a year zero. it'll be a thousand yeah yeah perhaps but, but that's that is sort of what I'm wondering because if you know it, it's different when we're talking about it was just normal people that aren't in this constantly um but to us and and more so to the people that are sort of having that argument about how celebrity uh is sort of obsessed or involved it is at this point like to to that narrative you're sort of already at the point where it's cooler for a celebrity to not buy in. Whereas if you actually, you know, pulled a bunch of celebrities that didn't care much about NFTs to them, it might still be like really new and exclusive and like would be super cool to get in, you know, Mm. so it's, there's a weird imbalance in in, um, how in, in like the mind share and stuff like that about, about being in the club and who's in it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's also wild and crazy, really. Yep. Uh, we're in but, month two of Q1, and, and ApeCoin is meant to drop in Q1, so we're getting we're we getting are, closer. We're getting very close, theoretically. Yeah. I mean, I guess they could push it back. Ah, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, Which brings us to Yuga Labs selling some equity or, or in negotiations to sell some ex- equity to i believe a16z is is who we're hearing that it would be going mm. to i think i heard increased. another name today but yeah what did you hear i can't remember is it a, a person's <laughs> name or a like, no it, 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 it was a company oh, okay. um 
Yeah. I can try and so see. I, I, I had heard it. age 16Z. I think Financial Times maybe even wrote a, an article about it. But theoretically, yeah. they're they're selling equity, and the number we're hearing is that it's being Yuga Labs, the entity, is being valued at five billion dollars. Right. Yeah. Which is wild and for a company that's not a year old. It's so crazy. Someone listed like the companies that it's larger than, and I don't remember exactly, but it was like Target and and like the magnitude of like some enormous companies that have been around forever. Yeah, let me. I'm gonna pull something up. You can kind of look at the camera and talk about something. See if I can get this. All right, we put on on the board ape yacht club segment that Yuga Labs is hiring as something to talk about. That's something that Jamie added. I was not aware of that. So this was a bad thing for me to bring up and talk about. Um, there's been like some community backlash against, I guess, of the idea of Yuga Labs selling equity. To, yeah, it's it's yeah. interesting because. We also at the very same time basically had Pixel Vault doing the same thing for mm. I, I believe they raised a hundred million. Um, you're making a face like you don't know. I, I don't know. Sounds I think I think they raised a hundred million dollars. Is is I think what I saw. Um, yeah. And yeah, what do you think about it? Do you have thoughts one way or the other? Or I'm... actually, right. I'm sorry. Right before we got on the air, I just I responded to somebody tweeting. That their tweet was basically saying, um, you know, it's weird for people to mint an ape for $250, let it go all the way to $250,000. And he, basically they were saying that in doing that, they are implicitly trusting Yuga Labs so much. And now mm. for that same yeah. person to question them raising money is strange. And I, I tried to just kind of give a devil's advocate that, okay, that's, that is a point, but what about the concept that they've, you know, built what they've built without any VC money? Mm. They made 90 ish million dollars from the mutants and are making, I don't really know. We could probably figure it out $200,000 a day or something like that. Uh, just in royalties that maybe they don't need to, um, which I thought was a pretty fair counter. And then he came back and said, it, okay, but, what about the idea that it's not about them needing more money, which really they probably don't. I mean, you know, obviously they have big plans, but they also have a big war chest right now, theoretically. But it's more about the ability just to scale the brand in a, in a global sense, which they don't necessarily have the um, know-how and team to do. And so teaming up with some sort of big VC company like A16Z, theoretically, um, would enable them to do. Yeah, you pretty much said all the points that I was thinking um, on one side or the other of the we're, argument. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, were, yeah. were you the points you were going to say mine or theirs or what? Yeah. So, I mean, I I mean, I get the people that are sort of against it, but I think I'm more on the side of saying I trust them and I don't expect them to do this in a way that is detrimental to the brand or to the ape community and the holders. Mm -hmm. And I think there is there are ways to structure it so that it just – adds value to the existing holders and the brand as a whole yeah. um, in terms of like, if you get money, make sure it's like vested for a really long period. The unlock it's like, we can't get dumped on or like, maybe it's not, they get tokens. They just have some equity in the company, which is a totally well, that, different that, thing. See now in the, in the notes here, you wrote about it being ape coin, but my understanding was, it was definitely not that is that they were just getting, I just heard rumors. I don't know for sure. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's, it's not that I think it's them getting equity into Yuga Labs. I think so up, too. And ape coin yeah. is a separate thing. Now it is interesting. Uh, there was like an eight, or so, maybe ten tweet tweet thread. That's I said the word tweet a lot in a row, but tweet, I believe it was thread. grammatically correct. Um, that you Buffalo, Buffalo, had, Buffalo, 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 Buffalo. That's a good one. <laughs> um, that you Labs had <laughs> did in maybe December or something, where they were kind of talking a little bit about people their, who have no idea about the Buffalo sentence is like, what the okay, hell well, is we're talking we're, about? We're gonna go there. In the English language, it is grammatically correct to make a sentence that only uses the word buffalo as many times as you want because there's like three different definitions of the word buffalo. The end. The end. <laughs> Not that um, although I guess it, you might need like at least three of them because otherwise... I think it's in at least seven maybe, but no. No, no, anyway. no, no I can't be right. <laughs> yeah, we're getting way off topic. But so in this tweet thread by Yuga Labs, they had basically professed a desire to make the 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 brand at least um 
So this would this would be Board Ape Yacht Club, not Yuga Labs, because Yuga Labs is up here, and then Board Ape Yacht mm. Club is just one thing under them. Although they haven't really done other stuff yet, they they aspire to. Anyway, the idea was we want to make Board Ape Yacht Club literally community owned. Um, right. Yeah. And it's not easy to do. It's it's sort of not even possible right now. But we're working with yeah. lawyers. We're going to take our time, and that that is our end goal. And so now, mm. to me the the sort of fear here would be when you give equity in yuga labs to these vcs you mm -hmm. have a situation where um you know yuga labs is stated desire to to get equity into the holders of the nft holders is going to be um your alignments are not going to mm -hmm. what is it incentives are not going to be aligned between the right, yeah. vc firm and the nft holders um, yeah, no, that's in, a really a way, interesting point. Yeah, in a way where right now it seems like Yuga Labs and the NFT holders' um, incentives are very aligned. You, you could kind of have that split a little bit once this outside VC team owns a, a piece of Yuga Labs. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I I saw that tweet thread and I was excited by the idea of the Board of Yacht Club being entirely community owned because I think that's amazing. Yeah. Obviously, it's it's very impractical and unfeasible to do like immediately. But yeah. as I'm in a work towards, I love love the concept of that. I do too. I also love that they have sort of more that they want to do with Yuga Labs mm -hmm. outside of it. So, like, you know, theoretically, get Board API Club into just the hands of the holders, and we we've got other stuff we want to do. Specifically, they talked a lot about gaming and, and what they think NFTs can do within the gaming space i remember as, as being something they were sort of leaning into in that tweet thread about the things that they want to do with yuga labs that is beyond the scope of just the board api club yeah 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 i mean i guess i, I guess so much of it is like we're speculating a lot here um lot, very speculative because we have yeah. so little information we have some rumors you know again like 10 tweets from them yeah. that we're kind of reading deeply into. Although, you know, they they weren't using um, very ambiguous language. So so we're basically mm. just restating in terms of when we're talking about that that particular tweet. Right, thread, yeah. Exactly what they said. Um, slightly off topic. The other day I was just thinking about the, the club in Miami. Like there's just going to be a club yeah. in Miami. <laughs> it's so crazy. That's, yeah. I can't wait for that. Yeah, me either. Um, that I think that wraps up the board API yeah. club segment. Unless you can think of anything else that you I think like we should to wrap it up there. On. There okay. was a lot already. Yeah. yeah. Board Board a a club. Club. <laughs> this is my I'm new favorite not. thing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving doing this. Uh, Art right. box. <laughs> so this is the first art block section. Well, first every segment while we're doing a video, but one of the cool things is that we can now share our screen of some of the art that we're talking about. So I'm going to do that right now. That's There's a little bit of irony there, right? Because what is the name of the most recent curated project on Artplox? Greens. There we go. Can you see okay, that? Okay, so now, yeah, I can see it, but I'm I'm a little bit curious what this does this is probably not an on-air conversation, but I'm curious. <laughs> what are what are the people watching on like YouTube or Spotify right now seeing? Are they seeing exactly what I'm seeing? Where I'm seeing yes. your screen plus me and you, and they'll, it's just yeah, exactly they'll see the what screen share plus the two windows of okay. us. You're below, I'm on top, and then this is over here. Well, and now hopefully side. these these sort of um bookmarks at the top of your screen, none of them are embarrassing that you don't want to be sharing because you you sure are right now. Yeah, I can't read, um, I can't read them. Maybe if fine. I maximize my screen, I could. Well, uh, this one's funny for the, the poker players out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that one. That is my child. Uh, Such a classic uh, image. This is some bear. Uh, agree. This is some bears playing with a balloon. By the way, my wife, the lawyer, would not <laughs> care for you clicking agree that quickly. <laughs> yeah. The GM collection Solana. All right. No, nothing too juicy in there. Oh, wow, no, no, your horses. So. When was the last time you actually used that, right? Yeah, that's a flashback. What are we looking at here? Oh, look at Platinum Spirit. We're very off topic again. This is, this yeah, we is are. one of my... This is our horses. art block segment. <laughs> <laughs> what a horse, though. Look at that. I know. Back when U-shapes mattered. 
Um, I think they still do. Do they? Not as much maybe as they used to, but I believe they still do, yeah. You haven't yeah. raced her since the 4th of December. Wow. Sounds about right. Uh, how do you find a graph of like winnings? Or... I think you have has to connect your lot. wallet, probably. Oh, I see. All right, let's um, let, let's get let's back. Let's talk about art blocks, yeah. though, maybe. Yeah. Now, did let's you not see my screens. tweet on, on Twitter about uh, screens? Because you did not respond to it, and I was a little... Slightly hurt. I, I don't think I, I saw it. Basically, after the it dropped, you tweeted like six of them. Yeah. I assume that they were six you owned. And then I asked you if you wanted to sell me the one in the top right, and you just oh, you're not gonna find oh. it here. So it was in uh my it was tweets. a response to your tweet. Well, I can just go here for that. I, I'm really showcasing all of the, <laughs> the back end of my my stuff now, but um there we go. Yeah, that one. That one on the top right, I loved. Yeah. And I asked if you I, saw I mean, I love all of them. I love this yeah. collection. So. Yeah. I'm I'm not easily ready to give. Oh, yeah, here we go. Boom. You, oh, I, sorry. Somebody I was able to right see up. the response. There it is. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. Liked yeah. It. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Does nothing. For um, me. back to, yeah, the collection. Um, you so did not, not mint any, correct? I did not mint any. This is from the same artist that did Rapture, which was a pretty popular yes. factory drop. I really love Rapture. Or very, as well. maybe very popular is better because might factories. be one of the most popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, they're let's animated. Go back to screens. Yeah, they're, they're animated. Screens. Rapture is. <laughs> well, screens are a little animated too. Oh, yeah, sort of. Yeah, they like render in layers like that. Right. Uh, this is a nice one. Um, now, what did they mint out at? So they mostly sold at before, so like the 1.5 ETH range, and then like 300 out of the 1,000 sold at 1.25. Okay, and now they're sitting just under two or right at two, basically? I think a bit over two now. Um, mm -hmm. Especially because like just before we jumped on this call, Snowfro, well, also they're trending on... Uh, the open sea front page that. but uh snowfro was i think gushing about them in the oh, wow. uh art blocks ama so yeah, almost three yeah they are cool. really nice i, I yeah. love them rachel loves them yeah i haven't delved yeah. too deep into it but um i i do definitely like some of them uh, some of the palettes are for me are not exciting but um it, definitely an interesting project with like cool interesting diversity um in mm. terms of the composition of them and like i said i do really love that one that was on the top right of the tweet that you had sent out now those you have exactly six and those are your six is that fair to say right well i have four rachel has two together okay. we have six and those are the six yeah. yeah yeah rachel just did one of these to me so i guess she bought a third one i think she told me about that actually earlier no she didn't okay so she rachel has three now so we have seven together um, it, what, totally is, was the, the top right one one of hers? Because maybe I need to go directly to her. <laughs> I don't know, actually. They're okay. all merged together. I don't know which were mine and which were hers. But yeah, you can negotiate with her. She'll, she usually lists things at like seven well, times full price. So <laughs> if you want to pay 15 ETH, I'm sure she'll maybe let it go. I certainly don't. I don't even want to pay 2.8, to be honest with you. But yeah, um, I do I do like some of them a lot. And so here, this like yeah. 868, I think, is that same palette. Um, which I really oh 878 is definitely it. I really like that 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 this palette one. to me really works. Um, and there's like a lot of yellows in here, which I've talked about this a little bit before when we were covering Edifice. But it's just for some reason, for the most part, I don't like art that has a lot of yellow in it. And I find it particularly actually interesting when there is art that is you know, big on yellows that I, that I gravitate mm. towards, which happened with the sunflower palette in, um, in edifice, which I guess, since you're doing the screen sharing, you'd have to be in charge of, um, showing, but that's, also this, oh, the summer name. fragments I love and especially oh, the yellow, the yellow ones. I, I do gravitate towards a lot. This is not it, but that's close. Cause there is some yellow there. Um, but like, yeah, here it's 963 and 962. Yeah. Um, I'm really into that. And it's oh, it I love this weird. collection. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. And I still have none. Mm. But I feel, I, I, I feel like generative art is having a moment again. We're definitely seeing more um, 
interest in I'm a little distracted just looking at the art. Yeah, but yeah so nice. Our art blocks has been a bit more momentum lately. And basically what it started with was a wallet with 20,000 ether. I believe it was 20,000. Something. Just started buying maybe. up squiggles like crazy. And basically the squiggle floor like doubled from like four to eight yeah. in a day because of this person, which basically just brought a lot more attention back to art blocks. Um, and so people have just been kind of buying a lot more than they had been previously. I also read that somebody um, swept Spectron floor the other day, which is another project oh, that I've been vaguely trying to get into. It's also one where this is interesting ish, or at least it is to me. The the literal art of Spectron to me is like fine, but the mm. concept and story behind it is really interesting to me. And I can't actually think of other art blocks projects where that's the case to me, but it's sort of it, it's it harkens back to a time that is still relevant in my life because it's talking about sort of like VCR era stuff. I don't mm. know if this is interesting to people, but um, it's, to me, it's it's sort of of a time that I can relate to because I was around for it, but it's a bygone era. So there's just sort of an interesting sort of nostalgia um, feel to it to me that, um, I, I gravitate towards. I, I do want to get one of them, but, but when I'm actually just looking at it and not thinking about what it's supposed to represent, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. I, I don't dislike it, but it's, it's weird that it's, it's a project that I'm so much more attracted to, um, in, in a way that is outside of the realm of the actual visual art itself. Mm. Um, which which is sort of interesting and, and speaks to what art is you know in yeah a way. because yeah. you know if you just wanted to talk about like sort of the the kind of stuff that people who are not into art are so um quick to poo poo like a rothko or, or a jackson pog mm. or whatever where they go my kid could do that um although i i think jackson pollock's art actually looks fucking awesome to me Whereas Rothko, again, I would go, you know, some of it's fine and stuff like that. Um, anyway, that's just kind anyway. of me rambling about art for a little bit. Here, now, here's the next curated drop coming up. Correct. By uh, Matty Mariansky, who is the uh, same artist that launched or Brush released Pops. the Brush Pops collection of Which Rachel, Rachel loves. Fame. <laughs> that's, Let's... that's funny. Of Rachel. <laughs> Yeah, she. I think she has like ten of them or six or I don't know a lot, or had. She might have sold a couple during the pump. Um, but but they're really I love them as well. They are nice. They're, they're, they're nice. Yeah, this video thing is great. I love being able to share this with. It is. And apologies to those who are just watching the or listening to the. the oh, podcast, that is, I literally didn't even think of that. But like it was already obnoxious when we were doing this without it. But now we're really leaning into talking about the the visual yeah. stuff. So it's going to be even more obnoxious for them. Yeah. We should probably be a little, yeah, just keep that in mind, I guess, of, of not being like, hey, look at this thing on screen, but like yeah. describing it a bit more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but look at this thing on screen. <laughs> for, for the people that are listening, there is now a video option. So at least maybe you can, if you want, skip the art block segment of the audio and then go back in time and, and watch the video of it later if, mm. if you are interested. Um, that's yeah. an option. Yeah. And, and hopefully they're getting released at around the same time, but because of the editing stuff, the audio might get released and then the video will be a like little bit quicker, a couple of days perhaps. later. But, I don't know. Um, this is our first, later, but... we literally don't know because this is our first time ever yeah. doing it. Um, but back to Parabellum, which is the next Artbox curator job. Uh, Maybe scroll down thought? to the description of it. Yeah. Uh, I'll read it out again for the... Uh, the listeners parabellum is about the conflict of emotion and gut instinct versus logic and, and reason emotions are portrayed by color fields logic is illustrated by words these two forces are fighting for dominance over the canvas under the hood parabellum utilizes a thin language engine that was trained by reading dozens of books about rebellion and anarchy to generate mostly non-existent english phrases an on-chain embedded font is used to render the familiar readable letter shapes against the abstract fuzzy color field fields. Mm, interesting. Uh, and then it says parabellum is half of the Latin phrase. See this passum parabellum. If you want peace, prepare for war. Interesting. So I guess parabellum so, means prepare for war. Um, there's a little bit of 
an Asemica thing going on there, right? Where they're sort of yeah. taking text and forcing you to to confront it, but not actually have it be a sensical phrase that you can read or, or words that you can read. Um, yes, but, definitely. But the Asemica was sort of doing it in a um, more pure way where that was all of the art, but also a less pure way because the lettering wasn't even the same system. Whereas this is doing like very sort of nice traditional um, sort of purely abstracted geometric art or whatever and then layering on top of that this and so now this is not mm. the ooh, just drop my pen this is not the collection these are all testaments this is the, the sample outputs from the, the staging area yeah. so just to give an idea of the different types of right yeah like this one looks really cool to me um it's got like the text diagonally slanting across the across the um the background color yeah yeah no, and as a fan of the Semica, I'm mm -hmm. obviously I'm it a big fan of this. It, it does very much do. Like, can we go back to the description a little bit? Yeah. I just want to sort of lean into something that they said. See, these two forces are fighting for dominance over the canvas. I very much am feeling that when I'm mm. when I'm sort of looking at it, I find myself trying to um, just enjoy the the sort of painting so to speak yes but then then i have this conflict of the other thing drawing my attention away from it um, yeah which kind of is interesting I, to me that i would sort of describe that as like challenging art i don't know if that's a, a term that people use much but um you know it's sort of um like it, it's it's engaging me in a way that's uh more active than yeah. a lot of art that that you can kind of just let wash over you there's mm -hmm. an inherent sort of struggle going on with it which yeah. is interesting um I, f I found one here which has seemingly no text or font uh yeah which is probably i guess one of the rarer types but um i would assume so yeah now can you actually uh, can you go to yep. the details like the token page of that one and see if there was a stat or not a stat a, a trait uh yeah so there is that um i don't know if any of them have i guess we we don't have enough context to know what any of these mean no. but possibly one of those is referring to the fact that there is no text mm -hmm. although i don't see any that would immediately make that obvious um can no. you scroll down is there something nope. below palette there um no that was the bottom palette's the, the last one okay interesting yeah yeah i'm excited i'm gonna mint Always try to mint. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit less into minting these days and more yeah. into secondary market shopping. To where, like, at, we've talked about something like this before, where um, sometimes before the project comes out, I'm not as into it as I am after the project comes out, and just being mm. able to really take in the diversity of the algorithm. And then find the parts of that algorithm, um, sort of the, the spaces on on the uh, just sort of the um, the three dimensional space, so to speak. I'm I'm being very weird here. That the <laughs> that the algorithm does with all the different um, uh, traits, you know, just the the different ways that that can coalesce into a singular piece of art. I'm finding it more interesting to get a real understanding of that find the ones that i really find interesting and just kind of go for those rather than sort of having the fun of the the roulette where you're minting and you don't know what you're going to get that is fun but mm. especially now uh that they're doing the dutch auction where they're kind of being valued for what they are worth in the mint rather than being so so cheap and then letting the mm. market bid them up afterwards i i find myself more wanting to just take in the whole uh collection first and then find what i really like and, and, and kind of try and acquire one that speaks to me like i tried to do with that screens that you refused to sell me <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i think that makes a ton of sense uh yeah, I'm, I'm doing the thing that i always do on the podcast except now i'm doing it on screen is just scrolling a through a yeah yeah well now they've gotten i guess more expensive 
Uh, like when well, I first you, started I mean, doing, they were like point two, point three. Now they've you know point six. I think is yeah, point five five. Point five five. Actually, that second one nice. there is sort of of the type that I like. Let's go back. I still don't have one actually. And actually, after the mutant sale, I have been doing a little bit of low key art shopping. Um, yeah. Right now, I've been aiming at autumn fragments. There's only a couple of those that I like, but I still need one to finish my collection. And so mm. I've been bidding on those. I still don't have a Dreams by Joshua Bagley, which is a collection you know I love. Um, and so I have a, a list of ones of those that I'm trying to get. So I bid on all of them. Actually, this is the, the second cheapest one here. No, third, third cheapest right there. Number 579 is one that I like. And I contacted the owner on Twitter. I want to buy it from them. I'll buy it at that price if they'll do it on Looks Rare and they did not respond to me. It's Matt hmm. Kalish, though. He's kind of a big shot. So I, he might right, be busy. Yeah. Probably. Co-owner of DraftKings or something to that effect. But I, I, I really like that one and, and would be happy to buy it at that price on Looks Super Rare. Nice. Um, but I have plenty of other ones that I'm interested in, too. So I'm just bidding on them on, on Looks Rare. I'm... I'm getting better at not having FOMO. And I mean, this is a plenty old uh, collection. So I, you know, FOMO mm. ought to be gone now. And I'm just um, okay being able to slowly add pieces of art to my collection rather than being like, I, I got to get it and pay the price that they're yeah, yeah. asking. Like July, yeah. August, it was sort of like, if you like something, yeah. just get it. It's going to be gone in five right. minutes. There's, there's very much less a sense of that yeah. now. I mean, if we just look at the last sale was four days ago, this collection. Right. So, and, and there's been like 10 sales in the last month or something. So, yeah. Yeah. It's very, very much a buyer's market at the moment still. Um, yeah. Uh, I wanted to buy something on stream. I wanted to buy... Oh, it's, it's disappeared. Uh, Stations by... Uh, Mint. Fernando. Mint, Mint, Mint sorry. Because you could Stations. still buy yeah these look just really cool yeah and so to me the first things that i'm just thinking of is ge dudes work and then the democracy yes. drop are, are the yes. two things that kind of come out to me but it's it's much more of a solid object than ge mm. dudes where his has a lot of um sort of like empty spaces and stuff like that and where you can kind of peer into and through the objects or whatever yeah you know what i mean I yes, guess less definitely. so with his Utopia drop. That that one is a bit different. Um, I'm actually I minted a few earlier today and haven't seen them all, so maybe we can just go through a reveal. Okay, I minted more than a few. <laughs> I minted fourteen. Um, these ones look really cool. And is this this artist's first drop on um, Art Blocks? I believe so. At least I didn't immediately recognize the name. Mm -hmm. So we got like this is awesome. Yeah. Now can you zoom in and out or no? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely got that Democracies thing yeah. going on when you zoom in a bit and see like the different heights of the. It's also okay, zoom out a bit. you know I was I was saying um, GE dude stuff, but GE dude stuff is inherently much more animated i don't i don't i guess i don't actually see any motion here that isn't being controlled by you whereas GED yeah. stuff is more like um sort of like alien factories where like stuff is happening and and um actively going on even without you i guess these are kind of yeah. rotating but that's that's very different that's just kind of letting you see different parts of it yeah um so like these spires and stuff on like ge dudes work a lot they'd be going up and down and there'd be stuff sliding um, I mean, I'll, I'll just search for G1, dude. Yeah. Uh, any particular collections? I think Ignition um, is probably a good good enough one. This this is sort of his simpler um, earlier works. I don't actually see much movement. But like, if you cl if you click the stuff, yeah. It, is where a lot of it is happening. Yeah. If you click and hold, it goes lights on, lights off. But I think maybe, so it might actually be worth now going to look at as it evolved and goes to, um, what is the other one? Aurora uh, is Aurora. sort of a, a bit of a more complex yeah. version of that same kind of thing. But it's also, uh, now, now I'm feeling like I um, 
was not super accurate about the degree to which it was animated, which is interesting. <laughs> Yeah, our friend Peter certainly, is more yeah. aware of this guy's art than I am. I've I've never actually collected any of it. Uh, I have a couple pieces, and and I've collected some more on FX Hash. I think he dropped. Yeah, that that's the stuff that I've looked at the most recently is their FX Hash work. Yeah, I bid on these actually a lot a while ago, like maybe shortly after my elementals days you know when i was really early i was like "Ooh, yeah you're interesting but yeah, i was very doing cool such and quite different bids. yeah all right i think um it was a pretty long upload section is there anything else we need to cover um i was let me pull up the uh email that we had with the stuff nope that's it we got the, the right. last curated the next curated and just the general sort of sentiment Activity. flowing back into it. All right. Art blocks. Art blocks. <laughs> uh, we'll probably get some great blooper reels for this. Uh... Yeah. Now, Roy, er earlier in this podcast, you teased how excited you were to talk about Zen Academy. So, we're... I'm, I'm trying to, like... I see what you're doing. You can see it, yeah. Zen yeah. Academy. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the people only listening and not looking Roy's background is a, is a Zen Academy custom piece of art and he's trying to highlight it with his hands. Mm. It's going somewhat poorly, I would say, but anyway, <laughs> you have a lot to talk about. Um, what, why don't you yeah. talk about it? It's an exciting time in Zen Academy and, and the three, three, three clubs point of like just journey, I think. So we launched in November and it's sort of just been a slow build grind for the last few months without too much happening beyond sort of now, just... see, build sounds more positive grind sounds a little bit more unpleasant uh okay it hasn't been a grind at all it's just been a slow build i mean like grind you're one word away from calling it a slog it has not been a slog it's not been a it's been a, a slow like uh journey let's like okay. march forward slow march forward where and now, i've, I've been not... told it's about the journey and not the destination is that accurate <laughs> The journey's been great, Sorry, Jamie. Bro. The journey has been great. Uh, but it's been very sort of like meandering, I guess. It's I haven't really said, all right, we want to do this. This is the goal. This is like, it obviously was fairly no open-ended. It's always been open-ended, yeah. right? You wanted to have a sort of um, inclusive and educational thing, right? Is that sort of fair to say? Yeah. And it sort of it has, um, it's, it's within a Discord server to the, for the most part, but you're doing a lot of like spaces and stuff on Twitter. Um, I don't know. I guess yeah. I'll let you talk. I've had a lot of like, like spaces and then YouTube thing and then a bunch of other stuff happening, but again, without like a focused vision or thing to move towards, but now it's sort of coming together. It's, it's like forming in my head, like the plan and the future for Zen Academy and, and where we're, where we're hoping to go. I've always wanted to, continue building it in some direction with that focus of education, but it was never very clear, I guess, in terms of like brand and marketing and like vision, I hadn't really put that much thought into it other than education, cool community and, and just provide value to people. But uh, a few days ago, uh, I hired Emily as like marketing, which is her official role, but like marketing manager, that. brand manager. Um, yeah. I met her through the crypto coven thing and, you know, we, we were chatting mm, and then... Yeah, right. I, Sorry. We're going to have a classic segment here. I say Coven. You say Coven? Mm hmm That's weird. All right. I, I'm not even Tweet particularly up. familiar with that word, so I, I might just be obviously wrong. Yeah. Crypto Coven? I'm, I'm curious. Oh, that's so weird to me. Crypto Coven. Pronounce Coven. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> coven, Google is definitely telling me it's Coven. Coven. That's the it's American Google with an American accent. Hold on. Coven. Yeah, it, it also has British. Come on, Let's British. Let's do a Come British. <laughs> no, British is also Coven. All right, I All was right. this it's one. It's Crypto Coven. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm, yeah. We met through there, and then I'd seen her like around in a few but other it's communities. An oh, hold on a second. No, hold on a second. It's an O, right? I mean, I guess I understand the concept of a, of a long vowel sound versus a short sound, but it, it looks like Coven to me. 
Coven would be like, it, you know, it actually says it there when you do the Google to pronounce it. K-U-H-V-E-N. That's that's Coven. C-O-V-E-N. That's that's Coven. C-O, by the way, C-O-V-E is unequivocally. That's Cove. So, <laughs> it is? You throw an N on there. Well, hold on a second. Coven. That's not what I say either, <laughs> is it? Anyway, go ahead. You sure? You done? Yeah, I'm sure. You can talk about your witch or whatever, your marketing witch. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so she came on as uh just to help with so uh, yeah I, I reached out initially i was like gonna see if she wanted to be part of the mod team because you know we're, we're growing and need a few more mods and I, I saw she was always online and modding for another community and then also around the same time i've been thinking and needing to hire another assistant. So then you know we were chatting it's like hey maybe you can you know help out and is that something you're interested in and she said yeah no let, let's have a chat and we'll see what what i can help out with and we jumped on a call and it was just clear that she was absurdly overqualified to be a model or like assistant rather um she's like head of marketing at this app one second a day i think is what it's called and, and just has all this like background experience in marketing and brand building working for nike and, and or with nike um and like she, she knows the branding aspect and that's something that we haven't really done but it's something that i've been thinking about a lot over the last few weeks i think because like CCO has been in the side, guys, it's been on my mind a lot. Intellectual property is a thing that people are just talking about more now. And I'm thinking more about like the future vision of just Zen Academy and, and other NFT projects. And I'm sort of realizing that there's so much power and value in like the lore and the story and the world building that these projects have. Um, yeah. So yeah, bringing her on board and now thinking about that more myself and like we're starting to shape the vision a little bit more for Zen Academy. And I was in a spaces, I think yesterday or the day before with someone who sort of said, as I was describing this, they said, Oh, so you're building like second? some listeners sure. might not know what a spaces is. Can you just sure spaces is like a Twitter spaces, which means it's, it's like a, like a, a voice chat room, basically on used via within Twitter there. within Twitter. So, you know, you go up anyone that's, following you on Twitter or anyone following someone who's in the space on Twitter can join and listen in. And it's like a real time live recording, like a podcast, but you can also get interaction with anyone in the audience and stuff like that. So I was on a spaces uh, a couple of days ago, sort of talking about Zen Academy and the vision. And they were like, Oh, so you're building like the Hogwarts of the metaverse. And I was like, yes, that's amazing. Uh, Caleb, like we, Caleb we by the way, is so into it now. Oh, great. That's, did you tell her Bigger that? Or she... I, I didn't, but I mean, she the is, biggest yeah. Harry Potter fan that anybody in the world knows probably <laughs> is my wife. I, we're we're going to get like a thousand people writing and saying, no, no. I mean, this room is not great for it. I was going to point out how much stuff there is. This this is very um, light on it. This is sort of the guest room that's sort of mm. also turned into my office. But her office over there, it's nothing but it's nothing but Harry Potter. <laughs> Behind yeah. her, you know, she has multiple degrees, but it's like much more prominent is her fake <laughs> Hogwarts acceptance letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A <laughs> uh, nicer frame, all of that. Oh, that's a great idea. What if we like and airdrop acceptance letters to everyone who has a Zen Academy? Like, there's so many cool things we you're can welcome. do. Um, thank you. But yeah, so I've sort of I heard I heard that idea, and I'm just like now that I can't get that out of my head. I'm just like Okay, with ideas and good, running with that. For the last seven minutes or whatever, you've been talking about how I didn't have a vision or, mm. or a, an idea where we're going, but now I do. But we're very vague and not specifically right. stating it. But now, now that's it was a lead up and yeah, the, sort of yeah, the yeah. It was it was of, all a lead up to Hogwarts of the Metaverse, and then you were like, like interrupted that. one second before, wow. <laughs> like you know, um, about the spaces thing. But yeah, Hogwarts for the which. I should maybe stop saying because of I don't want J.K. Rowling's lawyers oh, coming after me. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, but I'm gonna run with it for a couple more days. J.K. Rowling, the, the notorious later. turf. Yeah, um, I've asked. All right, like as soon as I heard about it, I, I DM'd a friend who's like an IP lawyer, and I was like, "Can I say this? I'm waiting to hear back." Uh, and probably the answer is no, but who knows? <laughs> um, but that's like well, the, I, the idea. You, you could probably get a. And again, I don't know. I literally don't know anything. But <laughs> you could say it's like the Hogwarts of the metaverse is probably yeah. like more acceptable than the Hogwarts of the metaverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, but, we're gonna yeah, regardless do our own thing. And, and Hogwarts will be you know like what? Eventually, Academy it'll of be the like, meat world. Sorry. I'm, yes. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna say that? <laughs> yes. I was gonna say. Yeah. You know, let's let's flip the script so that way Hogwarts is the 
Hogwarts who in 20 years? Yeah. Yeah. That'll never happen, but yeah. I know. Uh, but yeah, like just because of the power, just because it is like a video world, a gaming world, a metaverse, we can do all sorts of fun things where we integrate magic. And like, if we do a PFP collection, there can be like wizards and, and like different classes, warlocks. you know, houses, warlocks, you know, people can be divided into houses inspired by Harry Potter or like other things. And yeah, like airdrop have any letters of acceptance. official land yet. Um, metaverse land for zen academy or is that still just a no thing you'll get in the future when it becomes more necessary and current yeah i mean i've sort of been waiting for the the prices to drop which they are a little bit but i was actually that... just looking at sandbox prices today because i was just looking for stuff to offer loans on um nft5 there's so many parcels and they're so yeah. expensive what are they like three point eight or something yeah. yeah. Yesterday there was a rumor floating there around. There was one hundred twenty-one thousand, I think it said. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. There's a That's there's a lot. lot of them. Uh, but yeah, there was a rumor that Facebook slash Meta was going to acquire Sandbox. I saw that. But that's since been debunked. I think. Um, oh yeah, because I, I never actually saw where that rumor came from. Yeah, I, I just it, and it heard well, it in discords. Yeah. I was going to say, it doesn't sound like what f I would think Facebook would want to do, but they definitely have mm. acquired stuff before Oculus they acquired, and they were looking at Instagram, acquiring right? Instagram, yeah. Instagram, of course. Um, What's up? So it's, mm -hmm. so it's not out of the realm of possibilities at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's... it's. It does get uh, dicey, though, like with these NFT projects, the, the concept of acquiring them. Yeah. You know, if you're, are you acquiring, like, because obviously you can't just acquire all the NFTs by making an right. agreement with the company that released the NFTs. Yeah. And, and guess, it's, yeah, it's, really it's very different from just yeah. acquiring a company and now you have all of their assets. Yeah. You know, these decentralized things where, you know, the, the NFTs aren't literally necessarily assets of um, Sandbox because other people own them. Right. Um but it is sort of the end product or whatever. Yeah. Or, or I think a lot of it, it comes down to the experience. Like IP. Be the product. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm getting just more and more excited about just all, of, again, having an NFT project, you can do so many cool and awesome things. And we have such an awesome community and like a lot of people are like just into Zen Academy and like it as a, a discord server to hang out in and enjoy. And I love that. And now just thinking about, the directions we can take it in the future it's, it's definitely exciting. the main space we've been interacting with the fans of this podcast certainly because mm -hmm. there's, there's a channel in there for this podcast where um yeah we do a lot of talking with the fans yeah so yeah i'm very excited um yeah we're hopefully gonna ha we're just gonna be doing more things like uh the zen academy twitter account is going to be like so like very much up until now it's like very much everything's run through my twitter account and, and they haven't really been separate entities uh and like things but i think we're really going to focus on branding zen academy is separate to zeneca and the 333 right. club separate to both of those with its own twitter account and its own things because they are they are different all three of us are different entities uh and it makes sense to sort of brand them differently and have different messaging and, and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff uh obviously very heavily intertwined but um yeah no i'm really excited like, i'm bullish on zen academy and the 333 club which 333 club is getting pretty close to selling out as well which is fun and exciting um yeah guess how you're taking uh which call it again applications that's the word i was i mean i was i opened them up i saw January. you stopped as well because you got enough yeah i stopped last uh, a couple of days ago um yeah um that's exciting um i'm going to dubai next week to shoot a video course with I, I have not heard Academy. this oh <laughs> well there you go uh, i made it going to dubai but... when to do what now i'm going to dubai next wednesday um okay. to shoot a a video course with uh nas academy so nas daily is like this massive uh social media presence uh he, he does like videos and it has and... nothing to do with the rapper nas who's my favorite rapper of all time no, I think the the founder Nasia Nasia uh, he changed his name. Yeah, well, hold on a second. Could be because that's his real name. Ah, well, I, I don't think so. Means. I've seen his face. So. You know, but Nas, I think, means uh, people or humans or something. And uh, uh, yeah, it's just an academy uh, for learning. And they've recently started doing a lot more crypto related. Can you name stuff. one song by Nas? 
I can. Oh, song? I get it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is a yeah, song. Yeah. I, I a song. literally thought you were telling me that you yeah, could. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, um, that's a good one too. There we go. It is. Anyway, yeah, the, we're going to shoot a video course uh, on sort of helping people who are looking to launch NFT projects and all the things that go into it in terms and of marketing. Be on YouTube and... free it'll be on free? this. So it'll be a paid course through okay. NAS Academy. Uh, we don't know the price yet, but it'll be NAS free. Academy. I'm going to Google it just in look Yeah, look it up. Bit. It'll be, I mean, I can just screen share. Why don't we do that? Um, it'll be free for Zen Academy holders. So, and 333 three Club holders. That's cool. Okay, so yeah. this is there's a couple of things like this. I'm trying to think. Masterclass is the one that comes to mind. Yes. That's so to... there, he, he basically the inspiration for. Um, let me just get the thing shown up. The inspiration for it was literally Masterclass, and uh, I think he wanted to create content on Masterclass, and they were like, "No, we only work with an extremely select group." of you know yeah they're very, they're very the, big names over there Hans sure. Zimmer and, and like these massive celebrities and then uh, uh Nasir was like what about everyone else like there's tons of experts out there in all sorts of fields and so he right. just basically created his own thing uh, and that's what it is and so um yeah uh, like become a travel photographer content creator understand crypto um this is how I got connected to uh to Nasir Ben Yu who's a co-founder of Curious Addies created this course again free for curious addies holders um and yeah it, it's just like more structured education educational content i think and um yeah and and an so your specifically would be about launching an nft project is what it's going to be about yeah it'll be about um it'll it'll be yeah, all about launching a project and like running a project and the things that a project founder and creator needs to think about because obviously I've now launched mine and I spend 40 hours a week talking to other project founders who are launching and right. yeah. And, and I, I think that the course by Ben was already um, sort of like a real primer intro to NFTs. Just NFTs in general sense. Crypto and NFTs and all that kind of stuff. So I don't really uh -huh. want to rehash that. Uh, and I think right. this is a bit more niche and Yeah. So it just it's different. It's fun. It's exciting. It's interesting. It'll hopefully reach a new audience. Hopefully, be helpful content and uh, free for Zen Academy and three 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 club holders. I, I am I am one of those. So I guess I'll be able to watch it if I so choose. You are, although you paper handed another blue chip when you sold a Zen Academy token the other day. <laughs> yeah, I had four. I listed one of them for point three, and it's gone now. Yep. I still got three though. You still got three. Uh, and that, that's basically Zen Academy and, and that update. That's cool. And I'm, ha uh, I'm happy that you have more of a specific direction to, yeah. to head in with it, even yeah. though it was, it was, um, you know, a good community and, and definitely a pleasant thing and was sort of what you wanted it to be at the time. Mm. Um, it, it is it is nice to have a sort of a more focused way to drive it yourself mm. rather than kind of you know the, the, it was a nice organic community um already yeah but to have sort of a top-down vision is is probably good for a founder yeah absolutely and and i've spent like the last couple of weeks talking to a ton of lawyers and accountants to like figure out the optimal way to structure everything because I, i'm also thinking of DAOs. Fun. Yeah, it, it was not fun until the like most recent call because I find I, I found a couple of lawyers and I was like, and they got it and like they uh -huh. understand crypto and NFTs and they 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 know all about the space and DAOs uh, and like, that reminds everything. Me of my sister's thing, but we don't need to get into that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So now I'm, I'm really I excited. Heard of that. I'll check out OpenSea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I was talking to one, uh, I think, lawyer and. It was the conversation was going great. And I was like, oh, he gets it. And then he talked about, you know, the expensive um, NFTs, the uh, the cyberpunks. And oh I was like, oh. God. That is awesome. <laughs> no it's close. Like, pretty good con artist to have you convinced that they knew what they were talking about for that long. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, yeah, we've had lots of companies, the crypto and, yeah, DAOs. And, oh, I'm all about <laughs> NFTs. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, cyberpunks. Um, oh, well. Yeah, that's funny. That's, uh, but very big. Yeah. Exactly what happened to yeah. my sister, basically. Yeah. That's um 
that's my Zen Academy update. And uh, very cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, now that we should we think of a word for the Po app? <laughs> we should. Should we should we play that game again? What do you I think? We should play that game sparingly, so it's still special. I don't know that we need to play it, or maybe it could be a Q and A only episode thing. I was looking forward to it. I know you are. Mm. We could. I think we should. Okay. Okay. Uh, I got to think of a word now. If it feels like we're getting too much, then we can we can do it sparingly. Or we could also think of other games to to other ways to figure out the thing. You seem like you're deep in thought. I have a word. Uh, I don't. Um, okay, I have a word. Three, two, two, one. one. Ocean. Crypto. Crypto okay. and ocean. Oh, I think we got this one. Oh, really? I don't. Um... I'm not going to say it, but it's th this one is more obvious. <laughs> it's not obvious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How is it? Okay. You're going to feel like an idiot if you don't get it, too. You ready? <laughs> yep. Three, two, one. Open suit. Tezos. <laughs> <laughs> this is back-to-back oh, -back yeah. episodes where you have completely blown it. I don't even well, know how Te How is Tezos? Because Ocean, <sighs> it's the environment. Tezos is environmentally friendly. Crypto. Open sea. Open sea. Now, that makes sense. All right, so we got Tezos and we're, we're close though now. <laughs> Some more pepper coffee. Okay, um, I got my answer, I guess. All right, me too. Three, Three two, two, one, one. Art. Did you say art? Yeah, I said art. Tezos plus open sea art. The mark, the the open sea. Does anyone still use hen? Yes, they do. That's like the marketplace. A, of the 60s. Yes, they do. B. No, we're not in the 1960s, Jamie. <laughs> All right, what do we have? Art and hen. Oh, okay. I, I got it. This, this one is obvious. Stop. This one is obvious. Three, two, one. John. FX hash. What did you say? John, the Windows guy. FX hash. Art and hen. Okay. John John was actually art that was uh, uh, on and it's much uh, uh, better. John. All right, John and FX hash. I wish I could think of a generative artist whose name is John easily. <laughs> All right, I got it. I, I I so don't have it that I don't even want to continue. I'm also disgusted that you did, didn't get sugar last time and didn't get open sea last time. Oh but no, they were salt so and pepper. Good. Uh, that, no. Yeah, you think of salt. You don't think of sugar. You think of pepper. It's it's you, you're doing one of the things. It's two. It's salt and coffee. Well, salt is a uh, pepper. If we is both a spice. said salt, is a spice. you wouldn't need to go to pepper next because it would have already. Coffee been done. is a spice. Pepper is a spice. Coffee is in you know, the dark black color. Pepper is dark black color. Hold on. Your yeah. argument is that salt and pepper are both spices, as and coffee is too. A as coffee and sugar is, is not. Salt is not a spice. Salt is not a spice. I don't think salt. No, salt is not a spice. Is sugar a spice? What makes a spice? Well, no, maybe salt is a spice. Sugar is not a spice. <laughs> One of them um, is not a spice. I guess we're still doing this, and it's John and FX hash right now. Yeah. I got mine. I'm so, I'm so upset with you. I do not have one. How are we so bad at this? We? We. Disagree. Disagree 100% that we are so bad at this. I think one oh, of us I is. disagree with your disagreement. Although right now I feel like right. bad at it because right. I can't come up with anything. I feel like there's an obvious one. Between John and FX Hash? Yes. Okay, I'll go for it. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Windows. Generative art. Okay. Generative art and windows. Well, this is this is tricky. What's a generative art project that has windows in it? Okay. I think I got mine. Well. The... <laughs> I'm 
I'm going to say. I, I'm s- <laughs> okay, generative art in Windows. That's where we're at. Yeah, that's where we're at. Are you ready? Uh huh. I don't like this at all. Three. I think there's three, two, one. Processing. Neighborhoods. Neighborhoods. Oh, okay. Processing. And processing. Yeah. Neighborhoods and processing. Okay, I got mine. Three, two, one. Jeff Davis. Century. Uh, Century and Jeff Davis. Okay, I think we okay, got this, though. Okay, I Three, think we got this. Three, two, one. Casey Reyes. Casey Reyes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that so that's, was, the, that's the poet word. That was actually kind of gratifying. We finally got yeah, it. Yeah, we got there. And we, we there really was such a delay, though, between you well. saying it. It felt like cheating, but that one was obvious, I think. Yeah, that was obvious. So the um, word is uh, Casey, Casey Reyes. P-A-S-E-Y R-E-A-S. One Smush word. Together Smush, Smush together or Smush together. Smush together. C-A-S-E-Y R-E-A-S. Correct. And Casey Reyes. Yes. And we will, yeah, we're still figuring out the po op thing. It's like, yeah, it's, we're getting all the, sorts of issues with it, but. They're. Um, seemingly swamped and not quite as easy to get as many as you want and get mm. them distributed as easily as we were hoping. But um, people are seemingly very interested in collecting them. Mm. Excuse me, which is fun. nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now we've got to work for it. With them. Yeah. So Casey, we did it, yeah. right? We Casey did it. <laughs> we finally did it. Uh, we um, got from, is... what do we start with? Crypto and ocean to Casey Reyes. I... Boy. Just, just dwell on the fact that you did not get open C there. That is, I admit that was a bit of an you. oversight. Thank you, I yeah. appreciate that admission. That's something that you yeah. struggle with. I know. Well, I would like you to admit that you should have said pepper. <laughs> I should not have. In the future, in the future, if okay. we get coffee and salt, do not tell me that I should say pepper. Oh, this is not really showing up well. Yeah, it's showing I think up you well should. enough. I think you should. The internet clearly agreed that sugar is the correct answer. But it was 50-50, the vote. The, in your in your poll, that is not an accurate representation. And every time <laughs> humans used words to talk to us about it, they all said, I agree with Jamie. It's obviously sugar. I was yelling. At I, my... had, I had a few people say pepper. No, you didn't. A few people. Those people are well, like the Joker. They just want to watch the world burn, if, if they even exist. And I don't believe that they do. <laughs> <laughs> they were just my alt accounts like beanie had infinite alt accounts just like right right yeah um this has been episode 29 the episode first 29. ever video episode of two board yeah. apes thanks for watching slash listening have a good one <laughs> two board apes talking nfts d5 and two randoms